Welcome back to Fuzzland for part two of the do-it-yourself audio probe. Uh, in this segment, I'm going to be demoing from part one the signal generator or the quick and dirty test oscillator. So if you're curious about that project, this device that I'm going to be using in this video, the video before this, I'll give you all the information you need to put one of those together. Highly recommended, cool, fun, cheap, easy, simple, very useful little project. Um, this do-it-yourself do it audio probe, um, you use this for troubleshooting. So if you, if you have a piece of equipment that's malfunctioning, or more likely in my case, if I build something and it doesn't work right away and I can't figure out what's going on, what you, what you do is this connector here, you plug your cable to go to the amplifier, you turn your amp up, and then the wire leads to the black clip, which would go on your ground or your negative side of your battery of the circuit. And so then you would turn it on and have someone play the guitar or, in our case, use the signal generator to pump a note through it. And then here is the probe. So you would go, you would go in the box on the input where the jack comes in for the signal. And you would go ahead and touch that on there, and then it would go through the amp, and you'd hear it. And then you'd move back to the next component and to the next. And eventually you're going to find somewhere where it stops. You're not going to hear the tone. So then you can narrow down, well, it's either that part's bad or I have it, there's a problem, you know, with a short or a bad solder connection, cold joint, or maybe the circuit board is wrong. So this is, it's a really helpful tool. Um, I'm kind of kicking myself. I've known about making something like this for a long time. It's very simple. In my case, for the probe, I, I got an old red pen. That's the key. You need red because this is the positive probe. So you get your red pen, and what I did, I cut a piece of coat hanger wire and ground that down to kind of a point, and I cleaned all the ink and everything out of there, and then I run the coat hanger through there. And initially I had put a capacitor in here. There's only one part in this circuit. Well, there's one active part. If you're going to build this, what you're going to need would be <clears throat> some sort of a probe, homemade in my case, whatever you got. You could use a nail. Uh, you need the alligator clip, of course your connection wire. Then in here we have a capacitor. That's the only active part. Going to our quarter inch female jack, or you could, if you wanted to make maybe a little longer, you could put a male jack to plug right into your amp. But the idea behind the capacitor, and don't quote me on this, I believe in these types of circuits, what the capacitor, what its function would be to block the DC. If you're poking around inside a box that has voltage in it, and you were to pump that voltage through to your amplifier, probably wouldn't, because with uh, audio signal, it's basically, in the last video we were talking about 100 millivolts being close or right in around what a, a guitar note, that's the voltage, 100 millivolts. So you can imagine in the typical circuit, um, you know, here we have a fuzz face that I threw together, you're talking about 4.5 volts in there, or at 9 volts if you were really not looking, and that's quite a bit more than 100 millivolts. So I believe that's what the purpose of the capacitor is. Now, when I had looked around, I, I did a Google image search for this type of thing, and I came up with a few different designs. Um, basically, they're all about the same thing, but they use different values of capacitors. Some use electrolytic capacitor that has polarity, a positive and a minus, and that would mean that when you installed this capacitor here, it runs right through the red wire, uh, that it would matter which way your capacitor has two leads, say one's plus, it would matter which way it was facing. Um, <clears throat> the other diagrams, they didn't use an electrolytic, they used like a... a a mylar or a non-polarized capacitor where it doesn't matter. So you can you can see these diagrams as I'm going along here and you can make up your own mind. What I will tell you is when I first built this, what I had, I had a non-polarized one UF electrolytic looking capacitor, non-polarized one, and it, 
the leads came out of the ends, usually on those, the capacitor of that size, the ones that I'm familiar with, with the polarity, there'll be two leads coming out of the bottom. Well, for, for my layout design, it made more sense to use one that had the wires coming out of the end and hide it inside the pen, so that's what I went ahead and did. And when I tested the circuit, with the, the value was a one UF capacitor, the volume drop through the circuit, through the capacitor, was immense, meaning it was really quiet with that one UF. So I ended up, I cut it out of there, I put in a point one UF, a non-polarized, um, a greeny capacitor in here, and that, that worked a lot better. There isn't, isn't much of a volume drop, as you'll be able to hear later. So I would recommend you go with, you know, uh, Mylar 1.1 UF capacitor if you're going to put one of these together. Um, now, I'm going to be using the sine wave generator. This is the quick and dirty oscillator by RG Keen to demo this signal tracer audio probe. Um, one of the nice things about this circuit is it produces a sine wave. It's about the same volume as what a guitar outputs. Uh, the sine wave, you know, the nice thing about that is it's it's easier on your ears. The sine wave kind of, when you look at it on a oscilloscope, it's kind of, you know, snaky thing. And you can hear that. It's got a nice, like a bell-like tone. Well, bell-like, but it's a lot better than a square wave, which is what more common like 555 chip based timer uh, timer IC the 555 square wave output oscillators you can make those are a lot more nasty you know I was talking about the wave doing the snaky snake with a square wave it's up and down you know it's like square and you could think of that as being on off on off on off so when you when you turn that note down low frequency you're actually hearing it sputter up, 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 up. it's coming on and off moving over you know the <laughs> square wave and you're hearing that when you get up into the higher tones and it's going steady it's still you can hear that it's square and it's more nasty timbre um, in the early 90s I had put together a couple of these 555 timer base uh, CDSL light theremin. This circuit comes out of the Forest Mims Mini Engineer Handbook. Uh, I went into a Radio Shack with a paper and copied the schematic down and then bought the parts and <laughs> built a couple of them. Uh, I really like this chassis. I got it from American Science and Surplus, so hats off to those guys. In any event, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take a quick break here and I'm going to demo for you the difference between what a square wave sounds like and what a sine wave sounds like. So up next is our square wave through the ancient light theremin device. Hold on to your hand. This is a square wave here. You can hear it turning on and off. This series of just it's just pops. It's just popping, and that's the square wave. When you see it, it's a square, so the attack is kind of harsh. Example number two is the relatively pure sine wave produced by RG Keen's quick and dirty test oscillator. just a lot easier on the ears it's, than this little theremin that's putting out the square waves. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a break now. I'm going to connect the do-it-yourself audio probe and give you a quick demonstration on how, how you could use this device here in conjunction with the probe to troubleshoot problems when you're building effects or broken effects or anything audio that has an audio signal can use this audio probe for. Okay, now for quick demonstrational purposes, I've set up a barrel board here. Here is our signal generator, and the output is going through these alligator clips. So we've got our ground for signal generator coming in on this bottom strip, and our positive hot side carrying the signal on the top. 
Now over here on the opposite side, I have my ground clip connected that goes to the test probe, which is connected to the amp. So now I'm going to fire it up, and you have to keep in mind that you're going to hear a little bit of hum because the cables are not shielded right now, and I've got the audio, it's just kind of out in the open. So when you're troubleshooting, you're going to have to put up with a little hum. I suppose you could hook up a noise gate. I'll put my finger on the ground and quiet it up a little bit. Turn the oscillator on. So here's my probe. Let's say I'm going through the circuit and I'm trying to see where I get audio. You go on here. There you go. So this would be the first point. Let's say there will be your resistor connected here going down to this strip. I would go here next. And if I heard it, then I would know that the connection between here is good. Keep going through the circuit, you know, you can go forwards or back. Yeah, I guess you recommended to start forward, but this is a method for finding out where the problem in the circuit is or also depend, uh, determining whether or not you have a faulty component. So, um, if you'd like to take a look inside what's actually in this unit, um, I can plug the power. You can see here I've got the switch for the 10x volume mode or 1x volume mode, and then I added a volume pot, uh, power LED. I got my little snake on there. At the 1k that represents the frequency that this puts out. Power switch. We've got output and our 9 volt end. On the inside, you can take a look. It's actually a pretty simple circuit. You can see there's two transistors in there. Not a whole lot going on. I did it on barrel board, but we have power switch, LED, with, I added an additional resistor because with 9 volts, use like a 1K resistor so you don't fry the LED. The volume control and the switching coming off of those capacitors to give you volume mode. So, yeah, I didn't put a battery clip in. If you were going to add a battery clip in, it would be no problem Hook that up in here. Got plenty of room for a 9 volt in there. Uh, I'd like to thank R.G. Keene for designing this excellent circuit and all of his contributions. Uh, for more info on this, like I said, you can look at the previous video. Um, everybody at DIY Stomp Boxes, I appreciate everything you guys post and all the other people in the community. I'm, I'm learning. I'm new at this stuff, so I appreciate your patience with me. and uh, <laughs> I'll see everybody around. Keep on hacking.